Hey guys, so this is part two of the animation tutorials that we're looking at, looking at how we can create animation in 3D Studio Max um, and then exporting and importing them into Unreal Engine. Uh, so this one, we're going to look at um, actually how we start to create like bones within like models um, and then attach those. So inside 3D Studio Max, you're going to want to um, create a simple object. I'm just going to create a tube um, in here and um, just, you want it, so I suppose it's fairly long, um, just so that we can kind of see what we can do with this. Um, doesn't really matter too much about the size. I'm just going to go for um, like, let me change the inner radius to something like 20 maybe. Um, yeah, I think that work. Um, just so that we've got like a kind of a, a bit in the middle. I mean, I suppose it doesn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, um, quite quite a big height in there. And then yeah, everything else is fine. Um, height segments. We'll probably put a couple more in, uh, just so that we've got some more polys, uh, which our animation can deform with. Um, yeah, so ten height segments should be good. So I go into the front view. And just make sure that obviously your object is centered to the world. Um, just makes it a little bit easier. And then we'll go to open up the bone tool, which is in the animation menu. I'm going to create some bones. So just click at the bottom and then just keep clicking. So it doesn't matter too much the size of them, I suppose, just because you can resize these. You can change how big they are. Um, I'm just kind of gently going up down this uh, you know it doesn't really matter too much you know uh, six or seven bones should be fine if you uh, make sure that you right click on the last bit as well and um, that just tells 3 Studio Max that you that's kind of where you want to end the bone structure on that particular um, yeah bone system that you're creating so if we turn create bones off and if we go to refine you can select these and you can see that what we're doing here is where you click you um, it actually puts another bone in that place so it's like adding another kind of point in between it um, so essentially turns one bone into two so you know if you can make this more if you want to especially if you're gonna have a, uh, a lot more movement in your shape I suppose the more bones, uh, the uh, the more movement, the more deformation you can expect to see, and I suppose more control you have as well over the amount of uh, movement you have there. And you see, sometimes it can be quite tricky to actually select the actual bone just because you're. Freestyle Max is it's trying to be helpful, but you can sometimes keep clicking on the the model or on the bone structure. Um, so with the bones, um, what you might do is you might then select the the actual model, um, and we'll go to the modify panel. And we'll go down towards uh, skin is the modifier that we're going to be using. And if you click on add, hold down control whilst clicking um, on the arrow at the end will open up all of it. Um, if you do it, you can do it individually if you wanted to, or you can see so you can hold down control and it will open up all of them. And then you can just select all of them. Um, I tend to press control A to do that and then you can just hit select now if you move one of your bones Uh, and I always recommend like movement happens in the rotation transform control 
So rather than moving it, actually transform uh, with, with rotation instead. And there you go, you can see that you can rotate all the pieces around. Um, obviously how much depends on, again, how many polygons you've got there. So this is where some of the balance comes into play when thinking about putting animated objects inside things like uh, game engines because you don't want it to be too high poly so that it becomes computationally expensive but you don't want it to be too low poly so that if you are wanting to move things like this um, it doesn't become a situation like where it looks it just looks really bad just because you can see stretching um, when things are deforming so I'm just going to very simply just rotate these all around to the side like this. Nothing too fancy. Um, obviously, if I selected the first bone um, and try and rotate this, that's the base, if you like. That's essentially the root of this. So um, that would just pivot the whole thing, um, which is not what I want. I mean, it might be what you want for your animation, but it's not what... I want for this one. I want the base to stay where it is. So, um, if we essentially keyframe that on our animation timeline um, at the bottom of the screen in this position, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of animate it moving back and forth. So I'll hit Auto key, and I'll uh, make sure that um, again my bad habit of uh, hitting set key next to it, the little plus icon. You don't really need to do that, but I do it anyway. Um, although having said that, you might have to actually do it um, when it's the first keyframe. So now it's just a case of at sort of this position, we're just gonna move them back over. And I'm not being hugely careful with this. I'm not trying to make it so it's perfectly back to the center or anything like that. Just, and we'll just preview that, move it back and forth, and that's good. And what I can do is I can then make sure that when I come over to the end, frame 100, I will get it all moving over this direction instead. So, very easy, um, a little bit time consuming I suppose, especially if you've got more complicated bone structure than this, um, but that's how you achieve um, animation that works really well, um, unless of course you're looking at things like motion capture um, to kind of create something more realistic, but of course that would probably be for characters and not just simple things like this. So yeah, it moves all the way across, and of course when it repeats, it jumps back. So what we'll do is we'll actually extend our time frame by clicking um, on that little clock icon down there, um, and then changing the amount of frames that are in this animation. Um, so you've already got things ticked like real time, and it's going to loop as well, which is cool. Um, but we'll change the length of it to be 200 instead. Um, and that just means now what we can do is we can drag things back and forth. So it's a good idea to select all of them um, and make sure actually um, that everything is set to those positions. Um, so every kind of bone, if that makes sense, um, understands its position like uh, in, in the world, in this 3D world. Um, and the reason for that is then that we can copy, just copy those frames across by holding shift and dragging. So I'll just drag that to 150. Um, and then what should happen now is that we, yep, yeah, cool. So they all start moving back, which is what we want. Now do the same thing with the first one. So essentially I'm just mirroring um, what's going on with this animation so it loops back and forth. Um, and that's works as well, brilliant. Okay, so we just, you know, uh, got a complete loop now. I mean, you might, you might not want a complete loop for your animation, but that's how you would do it. So I'm going to export that and make sure those things are ticked, make sure animation's ticked and click OK. Then we can go ahead and open up Unreal.
um, put this in a new folder if you want to. I'll just call it something like wave import the actual model. Uh, make sure obviously import animation is ticked. Um, technically, uh, this one does have a skeletal mesh, you know, because we put bones in it. So um, that's good because it means that Unreal isn't having to create that skeletal mesh for us. It just it already exists. Um, I suppose that's another hero there, really, from a, uh, a pipeline process, but it's just worth noting so that you understand that this was actually um, already had a skeletal mesh because we created that ourselves. Um, yeah, and it doesn't look particularly fantastic or elegant, but hopefully that drives the, the point and how you create simple bone animations and import them into um, Unreal. can change the material, of course, um, which if we wanted to. Thanks for watching.